Hi there. My name is Marcel. I'm a developer relations engineer at Google, focused on helping build beautiful and modern widgets for everyone on Android. Today, I would like to share what makes a modern Android app widget, why it is important, and how you can achieve it with a few top tips. Android app widgets have been in our platform since the very beginning. They live in the user home screen, and they are a major player for a great user experience that leads to an increase in user retention and engagement. The home screen has always been a competitive place to be. This is even more the case since we launched Material U, which has led to users expecting a more personalized experience aligned with the look and feel on their devices. By following the principles I'm about to present, you can increase your app chances of being placed in the user home screen and also provide the desired user experience. So when we refer to modern Android app widgets, here's what we mean. These widgets are aligned with the device theme. They adapt to multiple sizes and screens, and they are easy to discover. They also enable some user customization, and of course, they are helpful. But why, after all this time, would you invest again on providing a new widget experience? Let's take a look at two great examples, Google Keep and Google Drive. If these apps hadn't modernized their widgets, widgets on under 12 home screen would have looked a bit different. They wouldn't have been aligned with the device theme, thereby ignoring users' investment into their device personalization. They wouldn't have adapted to the available space, leaving visual gaps or unaligned widgets. They would have had tiny clickable targets, causing some poor accessibility. Some users might have kept such widgets, but most would have removed them, or even worse, found other solutions. Instead, teams working on this and other Google apps refactored their widgets to let users adapt to the home screen, creating a more flexible shapes and sizes and do even more with their widgets. For example, Google Keep not only adapts to the user home screen, but also brings more value by providing more expressive shapes to maximize the space and extend the functionality. This is a much better user experience compared to the static color widget that isn't optimized for large screens. Similar to Google Drive, our team totally reinvented the existing semi-transparent and static widget. First, they leaned into the dynamic color theme. Then they optimized the amount of glanceable information based on the available size. For example, by providing a new search functionality for larger vertical spaces. So instead of seeing widgets that are outdated and stale, now users can enjoy an experience that is more personalized and dynamic. And what's more important, the teams did not only improve widgets for regular fonts, they made sure to provide adaptive sizes for tablets with larger fonts and additional actions, making sure to use that extra large space. So how can you do the same? Whether you want to update your existing widget or you would like to build a new one, we recommend following these principles. The best place to begin is with our developer resources. We recommend starting with our refresh guidance and our new sample. And even though it's currently in alpha, it's worth checking out the new Jetpack Lens library, which we have built with these exact principles in mind to help you build better widgets with Compose style code. Here are few top tips for each of these principles that might help you modernize your widgets. When we refer to a widget that is aligned, we mean this. It fits into the shared ecosystem that makes up the home screen by adapting to the wallpaper colors and the available size defined by the system theme. It provides also a smooth launch experience for your application. And here is how you can do that. First. Make sure that the layout that defines the background uses the Android ID background as ID. This helps the launcher identify better the background of your widget, improving the launch experience. Then, use the theme from the Material Components library to define the color schemes of your widget. This enables dynamic colors, but make sure to set the color resources and not the resolve color. Otherwise, the system will be unable to dynamically resolve the colors. And starting in Android 12, the system automatically applies rounded corners. To ensure your content adapts properly, use the system values in your views. To enable widgets that are adaptable, 
Make sure to use the available space by filling its content and adapting based on user preference. At the same time, it's important to define your widget limits. Remember, in the end, we want helpful widgets. For example, here is the system battery widget that adapts to the available space, showing more or less information about the connected device based on that. In short, make sure your widget layout fills the space by setting match parent and ensuring the rest of the content adapt. But be sure to define your limits. Sometimes a small widget does not make sense. Now, starting on Android 12, we can provide responsive layout. You can use the extensions provided in the new Android X Core remote views to simplify that. For example, here the weather widget provides three types of sizes. Then the launcher decides which of these fits better based on the available space. We need as well to help users discover your widget. You can do that by providing accurate and rich previews with proper labels and description that will be shown on the widget picker. Also, Recommend the widget inside your application. Help the user pin it into the home screen. Did you know that you can as well have Google Assistant reply to a voice query with a widget? You can check these docs for more. Adding a name to your widget is easy. Add the label to your receiver. And then make sure to provide the description in the widget metadata. To make widgets more discoverable, provide an in-app experience and request the App Widget Manager to pin the widget. For example, after a user saved the new weather place, we could show a tooltip to recommend them to add the widget on the home screen. So having the system to request them, and you will be able to provide a, actually a custom preview to this screen. Every user is different with their own individual needs. In addition to provide different sizes, it's important to enable customization when it's possible. Use the configuration screen mechanism for that, but also make sure to provide good defaults for the vast majority of users, so maybe skipping the configuration at the first time. Whatever the case, it's a good idea to let the user reconfigure it as they want. To enable this, you can set the configuration activity on the widget metadata, and then set the reconfigurable and configuration optional flags to enable the rest. Finally, widgets should be helpful. Don't overcrowd them. Make sure you provide essential information and quick, simple actions based on the billable space and redirect users to the in-app experience for a full set of features. Also, and this is important, be respectful of the system health, since widgets live in the host process. Make sure to optimize them and reduce any background work by using Work Manager with proper parameters and respecting the update frequency limits. Thank you so much for watching. We hope these principles and tips help you adjust or build new, modern, and beautiful widgets that adapt to your user needs and are helpful to them, bringing more engagement and functionality to your application. Goodbye.